How's it going everyone? Welcome to another Dynamic Projectiles video. I am Jeremy Alexander, and in this video, we're going to be redoing our camera. I'm very excited to redo our camera because this is something that I have come up with and I have wanted to make for such a long time, and then I just figured it out and it was just, it's such a cool effect to add to your platformer game, especially a game that has so much action. So if we look at our camera follow event, and by the way, if you remember, I separated our camera events here. We have our screen shake events, and then we have our camera follow event. And in this event, we didn't really do anything but make it work. So I wanna make it a lot better. And here's how we're gonna do this. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take the every tick and we're gonna hit B on the keyboard. Then we're gonna double click, go to our player and type in mirrored. That way we can check to see if it's mirrored. We're gonna copy and paste and then right click invert. So that way we know if it's not mirrored. So now every single second this, this code is going to run and it's going to be checking. Is the player mirrored? Is it not mirrored? Which we are doing in other events, but this one is for our camera. So what we need to do is we're going to need to linear interpolate between two, posi or two positions at a certain rate. Now I'm not gonna get into lerping so much so it confuses you. I just want you to get the effect, but there is a great, great blog post on the Skira blog that I will link to where you can read all about the lerp uh, functionality and how the math behind it works. But here's what we're going to do. We're gonna make three variables. The first one is going to be our camera height. And I'm gonna put this for this project to 10. But with our camera height, you have ultimate control over it, so you could put that to even higher. I know in my fighting game, I have it at 100 because I want it to be 100 pixels above our player, which is really cool. So in the next one, I'm gonna make another global variable by hitting V on the keyboard. I'm gonna call this my look ahead. That's right, this camera is a look ahead camera, which is really where this effect shines. And I'm gonna put this to 50 pixels, so give it an initial value of 50. Then I'm gonna make one more variable, and this is going to be our speed as to, as to which our camera catches up with our player and our camera itself. So our speed, I'm gonna call this our camera speed, and this is going to be equal to 0 0.08, not five, eight. This is a speed that I like. I think it's the fastest that I am willing to go to, and anything slower is just a little bit too slow, but it still provides the same effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this line of code, drag it down here, and we're gonna double click on it. Let me bring it over here. And we are going to use this. We're just going to linear interpolate between two positions. The first position is going to be the camera. So I'm gonna type in lerp for linear interpolate, and I'm gonna pick the first number here. The first number is going to be our self because that's the camera object. It's the same thing as typing out object camera, but that's redundant, so I'm gonna say self.x, then I'm gonna say comma object player dot x. And now this is where it gets to be fun. We're gonna say plus negative look ahead. So negative 50. Then the last parameter for the lerp function is going to be our camera speed. And we're gonna exit out of that. Now we're going to do the same for our object y, but we're going to add the height in this one. What we're going to do is we're gonna say the lerp between self dot y, so camera dot y, object player dot y minus the camera height. Then we're going to say camera speed, just like that. And we're gonna hit okay. Now here's what we're going to do next. We're going to literally just control and click. And that's it, we are done. Because what we are doing is we are actually, oh no, we're, we're not done, we're almost done. We just have to remove the minus sign because this is gonna be positive 50. But it's that simple because since we're storing these in variables, I can change any of these. I can change how many pixels I wanna look ahead just by changing the look ahead variable. Now, the last thing I wanna do here is I wanna actually go into my project properties and I want to be able to preview in NWJS for desktop because I found that it's just a lot more efficient for me in my videos to preview with this versus something else. But we're gonna notice here that it's kind of small, so we need to fix a few things here. And we're gonna actually run into a bug, which is cool. So our look ahead works perfectly, but I can't tell if you can see, you, you should be able to see that it's a little bit glitchy with our player. And that's a really, really, really common 
bug with our camera because whenever you're trying to linear interpolate between something it's doing it at float values so what we need to do is we need to go to our project we need to go to view properties and besides doing an nwjs there's one other thing we need to do and that is up here we need to turn pixel rounding off so it doesn't always round it to an integer and that will save you a lot of headache I promise, a lot of headache, yeah. It's gonna save you a lot of future headaches here because now our camera's gonna run really smoothly. But you're gonna notice here that the effect won't work right here in this dead zone. And that's because it's a camera object that's scrolling to our player and we're very close to the outside layout. Now that's actually fine, but I'm actually going to grab all of these things if I can. I'm gonna try to select them all. There we go. And I'm gonna actually move everything. I'm gonna try to put this right into the center of where I think my level should be. Now, it doesn't matter if it's in the dead zone because to fix the dead zone, you would just turn unbounded scrolling to yes. But I also kind of want it to be in the middle so we can actually start to make an actual level here. And there we go. Here's our awesome effect. And I really, really love this effect here. And you can change the values all you want. So if we go back here and we go to our camera follow events and we change the look ahead instead of 50, let's put it to 100. And let's just see the drastic difference here. And let me make this bigger. That's a huge, huge look ahead speed. But look how cool that is and how easy it is to actually do this. I'm so thrilled with this. I'm very proud of myself too, if you couldn't already tell. But here we go. Let's change the camera height and let's see how that works. Let's see. Okay, so we're actually 50 pixels above, which is, you can't really tell the difference there. But maybe if we go to 100 pixels, we might. But that's also just dependent on our screen size and what's going on here. So I'm going to put this back to 10. And that's pretty much it. I don't need to change the camera speed. I don't need to do anything else like that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I may have missed. The one thing I want to do is I want to make this... I want to make the, the layout size and window size the same here because I want to make it to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So I'm going to change it from 640 by 480 to 640 by 360. And then I'm going to actually do the same for our view, 640 by 360. And I could probably move all this stuff up. And you'll notice that our HUD stays there because it needs to stay in the window size so it'll stick to our screen statically. There we go. Oh, there we go. Now we're nice and zoomed out. So we're gonna have to fix the zoom out, but let's see how I can fix the zoom out. I know how. Let's actually just change the window size back to what I had it at, 320 by 180. That way it brings it up a little bit. There we go, that's better. So that's going to be it for this tutorial, but I really do hope that you have learned a lot from these videos. We're going to get back into doing some projectile effects soon, and we're going to be making more projectiles in the future, but I thought just making this camera follow event a little bit different is going to be a lot more fun and a change of pace. Now, the one other th last thing I promise, the last update I did was to the music event, I added an or to our M pressed, so that way I can actually control it with the keyboard as well, which is pretty helpful. I don't know why that's there, but this is all very helpful. And I've gotten some requests to make a more advanced management system for our music, where we can probably do uh, more SFX controls, like a slide or something like that, which we might do in the future as well. Let me know in the comments what you think. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and comment below, and I'll be sure to answer you with any questions or anything like that. Thank you so much for watching this. Again, I am Jeremy Alexander, and I'll see you next time.